Explore tropical rainforests across the Americas, and on the branches of the trees, you'll be sure to find countless bromeliads growing as epiphytes. At least three and a half thousand species of bromeliads are known to science, with many new species continuing to be discovered every year. All bromeliad species except one occur in the Americas. The only exception is called Pitcania feliciana, which is found in tropical West Africa. Bromeliads come in all shapes and sizes. The very biggest is Puya raimondii from the Andes, which produces gigantic flower spikes up to 10 meters tall. Bromeliads are often spectacular plants to grow at home. Thousands of species are in culture, and countless more hybrids have been produced by horticulturalists over the last few centuries. Many produce colorful flower structures that occur in amazing shapes and hues. But the foliage of bromeliads can be just as colorful and striking as the flowers, with incredible patterns, stripes, splotches, and spots. In many bromeliads, the leaves can be lined with ferocious defensive spines. Believe it or not, you've probably eaten a bromeliad recently, the pineapple. It's cultivated on a massive scale worldwide for its delicious fruit. When the pineapple is in flower, it's easy to see its affinities to other bromeliads. Three species of bromeliads eat insects. These carnivorous bromeliads are Brocchinia hestioides, Brocchinia reducta, and the epiphytic Catopsis berteroniana. They all work in the same way. Their brightly colored leaves are covered in an ultraviolet reflective waxy powder, which attracts insects. The wax clogs the feet of the insects so they can't grip, and they slide down inside the leaves and drown and are digested, giving the bromeliad essential nutrients. This strategy is so successful that these murderous bromeliads can cover entire landscapes. Many bromeliads are very easy to grow, and some are very tolerant of shade, making them perfect houseplants, especially in bathrooms, as many species love warmth and humidity. Bromeliads have many special adaptations over regular plants. The foliage of many species is arranged to create a pool of water at its center. Leaves and other debris accumulate, giving the bromeliad a supply of water and nutrients, allowing some bromeliad species to grow with no connection to the ground whatsoever. The air plants, known as Tillandsia, are among the most highly adapted of all. They grow with no soil around their roots. Air plants occur in an amazing range of shapes, colors, and forms. The foliage of many air plants can seem so weird and unearthly. Most air plant species have silvery foliage, but they transform when they flower, often turning bright pink. This is my favorite Tillandsia species. This is Tillandsia bulbosa, so-called because of its big, fat, bulbous base. And I just love its weird, wiry leaves, almost like Medusa snakes coming off of it. And when it flowers, it turns this beautiful red shade up here. But some Tillandsia get really big. This one here is a hybrid, and it's about 10 years old. And just look at the size of it. It's like some monster pineapple. Yensi Capitani from Paradisia Nurseries in Australia is an expert in growing air plants. Tillandsia is a remarkable plant. These in nature have evolved in a niche where no other plants can survive. They can live on power lines, grow on rocks, grow on trees, grow on the ground. They're really suited for just about every environment and for just about every climate. They're remarkable but very, very slow growing plants and they actually do have some pretty stunning and amazing flowers so they're very rewarding for the collector. This is the most amazing of the uh, air plant family, the Tillandsia eucinoides, or what many people call Spanish moss. It was used as mattress stuffing in the 1800s. This is quite remarkable in that it does not form roots. It's one plant growing on top of another plant. So that is one plant. This is 10 to 20,000 plants. 
Tilantias are remarkable plants. They're able to survive on almost anything. We grow a lot of them just in trays. We often attach them to wire like these uh, in long strings and grow them for three, four, five years before we break them up. Or we glue them onto wooden objects. Uh, this stick is probably been done four or five years ago, so you can see the roots are entwined. Uh, and we take our cuttings from these. That's how we produce them. You can also attach Tillandsias to any inanimate object, as long as it's not toxic. You can put them onto trees, onto windows, tiles, ceramics, ornaments. All you need is some fixing method, either a plastic coated wire, aluminium or a non-toxic, non-rusting wire, or glues like uh, we use hot melt glue, you can use gel grip. Any glue that actually does not have a strong smell, if it does, then it will probably also kill the plant. There are two ways to produce Tillandsias. The way nature does it by producing flowers and seeds, the seeds are blown in the air and will eventually land on surfaces, which could be almost anything. They'll start to germinate and produce uh, small babies around six or eight months of age. At 12 months of age, they'll be only a few millimetres in size. At two years, three years, and at four years. For this particular species, it becomes mature and already starts to flower. Some, however, can take up to 20 years. So the most reliable way, and the way most collectors do it, is by offsetting. When the plant finishes flower, they produce one, two, three or four offsets. They can mature on the plant within one or two years and you can build a collection much faster than by seeds. During summer months, air plants and many other bromeliads can be grown outdoors in temperate countries, adding a touch of the exotic to your garden. With so many colourful and exquisite bromeliads to choose from, why don't you give them a go? Good luck and happy growing.